think dad was lying to me whenever he said there was no yield difference. <laughs> guys just pulled up down here uh my truck's up there there's a semi up there and there's a grain cart up there i'm gonna run this for a little bit until my cousin gets back and then i think i am going to go help my dad because we got some test plots for corn and i know that my dad will not slow down to pick them. So I am going to slow down to pick them and uh, hopefully get some good results and figure out what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. We're getting ready to open up the grain tank here. You just kind of tap that button. I think it did cause some folks perhaps delay plans. And then it opens up. Or it should. Yeah, there it goes. It's still a little early, but I need to cut a little bit so then I can look at the head. So I'm going to cut somewhere here and then open up this field a little bit so then that way we can get trucks in here, get them turned around and stuff. So, yeah. Better put the reel out. Um, does that make you kind of refocus your strategy a bit? Right about there. Alright, let's go cut something. So on our uh, bean head we got here, we used to just have the old snoots that came out, you know. Well, we put them on there. Now, there's only one problem I have with them, and that is this. They love these vines and the cockleburs. And you gotta get them off somehow. And of course, I don't have my gloves. Yeah, they just eat up everything. Get it all wrapped up in there. You gotta come out here and kind of shove it all off, then back the head up and pick it up. So, uh, we are gonna go ahead and keep cutting because it's actually a lot drier than what I anticipated it to be. I figured it'd be a lot wetter. So, uh, let's go ahead and get after it. So on today's daily lunch platter, we got a notebook, a turkey sandwich, Cajun turkey sandwich, and another Cajun turkey sandwich, some peaches, a V8 fusion, um, some peaches, an apple, and a neutral grain bar. Yummy. Really appetizing. I love when our mom fixes lunch. Is this how you're supposed to eat, to eat peaches? Cheers. Yummy. If you don't like peach juice, get out. Very good. So I'm now down here at our blood farm, our big farm down here. Hold on a second, dad texted me. It's easier to see on the other end of the field. Okay, so we're down here at this test plot that we've done with, between a plane and a uh, Heggy. All right, now, from what dad is saying, he thinks that the what was done with the plane is a point or two drier than what was done with the Heggy. So what that means, okay, it's gonna get really complicated here in a minute because it's, it's pretty intense. So when you're spraying fungicide, you're not only spraying it to protect the crop, but you're also spraying it for a test or for a stay green. Now the stay green part of it means that you want that crop to stay greener in order to produce more of a test weight, to bump the test weight up a lot. It keeps it growing basically. Now, as you can see, this is on the airplane side of it and you can see it's 
dry. I mean, there is like almost no green in it. And like what dad was saying, he's over there in the combine. It's a pointer two dryer, okay? Yeah, pointer two isn't much, but whenever you're talking about your test weight, losing test weight, I mean, you could be losing, I don't know, two or three pound on the test weight. You don't want that. So that's why we spray that fungicide on some of these fields, especially on some of our fields that we expect to yield more. Now, the one thing that Pioneer did say whenever they came out here and looked at this field, because Pioneer was the one that wanted us to do this test plot. It's a, it, this is like a 200 acre test plot here. And they was like, okay, well, we want you guys to spray part of the field with um, an airplane and then spray the other part of the field with your Hagee. So we sprayed a part of it with the Hagee and a part of it with an airplane. Now, the airplane, of course, you know, they can get a lot more done. They can do this and that. And, but from what Pioneer had said is, if you don't have anything else to do it with, then yeah, an airplane's gonna work fine. But if you have the means and the reason to have a Hagee or to buy a Hagee, then go ahead and buy the Hagee. Because it, in the end of the day, it is going to be worth it in your best interest to buy a Hagee if you're doing as many acres as what we are with a Hagee. So it's not gonna be very good on that fuel wagon. So this is on the airplane side. And I mean, as you can see, there's just a little bit of green there. Nice little floppy cobs, a little bit stocky on the flop or on the stem. And as you can see, there is not, there's a little bit of green in this. And I mean, you can see it as you look out through there. There's one green leaf that I can see. There's a couple more back there, a couple more over there. But according to dad on the other side, ah, let's get out of this point. Ugh. At least it isn't pollen, but yeah. So we're gonna go over there to that other side and we're gonna look at it and then we'll kind of make a deciding difference. Um, as far as yield, there is no yield difference. I don't care who you are or what you say. From what dad has told me so far, he has not seen any yield difference. Um, there for a while, people was posting all over Facebook that between the airplane and the Hagee, there's a yield difference. Well, from what we can tell, there is not. And every single one of our loads that comes into the field and comes out of the field is all tested, test weighted, everything. I mean, every single one of our trucks is. So we pretty well got a good idea as to the fact of the matter that there is not a difference in the yield. Um, maybe one bushel, but is one bushel really worth it over paying somebody $20, $30 an acre to go do it? No, not really, not in my opinion. In my opinion, having your own Heggie is probably worth it. I mean, if this side over here is staying a point or two higher, which is the Heggie side on your moisture, that's a good thing because it's staying green. It's, you guys know what I'm saying here? So let's look at this. So there's still green in this. I mean, you can see a lot more of it out here than what you could in the airplane side for sure. Yeah, I'm knocking down corn. It's a little bit brittle. Yeah, look at this. That's what I'd rather see in a cornfield. I'm just throwing that out there. But that is what I would by far rather see. I mean, you can still see green in the stalks, kind of. Especially right there, right there. All of this, you can still see it. That is a good sign. So at the end of the day, in my opinion, this might not be your guys' opinion or what some people want to hear, but having a Hagee will be worth it at the end of the day. You can tell that that fungicide was still in the plant longer than what it was in the airplane side. Now why that is, I don't know. 
but just from walking around in it you probably got better disease control better disease i mean there's a lot of better disease resistance there's a lot of this stuff that whenever people are thinking about this they're not really thinking about it all the way and i got the results to prove it now i was right Peggy over an airplane every day of the week we've picked all of this out here the other thing is you always want to have that extra long disease protection and the main reason that you want that disease protection for the longest that you can is because for like us here southern rust if it comes in late and you don't have protection on that and it's not as long as what you can get it you are screwed yeah see look at that right there you can see a perfect line where that test plot is and then it just kind of keeps going it doesn't look like it really greens up on this side of it a little bit there but not what you'd like to see so my final contradiction is we are going to keep the heggy maybe upgrade it and because I know somebody is going to ask, because Dad does have a GoPro, yes, we do have the 8400 on the grain cart right now. And that is only because the 470's PTO decided that it wanted to go out yesterday. So we put the uh, 400 on the grain cart. There's the 470. And there's the 400 down there on the grain cart. It makes that grain cart makes that tractor look small <laughs> so I'm now out here running dad's combine he left me to uh, pick some corn for a little bit it's looking pretty good pretty good he also didn't realize that you can plug in your GoPro to his phone charger so he's got one of them uh, Android or I, I don't really know what it is I don't know what his phone is anymore but yeah, picking some corn. 8400s on the grain cart, like what I said. Yeah, I don't like it either. It's weird. But, oh well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pick this test plot area kind of thing. And uh, I got a couple of plastic bags from Dad's lunches. And I'm gonna put samples in them bags. And I'm gonna check them myself and see the difference in the test weight and the moisture. And then also as I'm going across the field, I'll be able to tell if there's a yield difference at all. Um, there's also a test strip in there. There's about two or 300 foot test strip in there. I'm sure that that'll give us a good idea of what the fungicide's doing. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll see. I'll pick some and then I'll update you guys here in a minute. The plane was holding kind of constant around 200 to 210. And where we're at right now, we're holding constant around 240 to 250. Oh, we just hit 270. 250, 260, 240, 237, 243, 239. This is in what was done with the Hagee, okay? I was in earlier where in the uh, part that uh, was sprayed by the plane and it was doing a lot more, it was doing like, not really worse, but it was doing 210. I'm, I'm just telling you guys, I mean, I don't care who tells you what. I think having a Heggie's worth it. I really do. There is enough of a difference here for me to justify a Heggie over a plane. And I haven't even gotten to the moisture tester yet. And the to be able to tell you like what the physical differences of the corn and I mean I haven't pulled a sample out of here yet I got my sample right here from the plane yeah and uh, we'll see if we can even see a kernel difference you might be able to see a little bit of a kernel difference um, because the test weight affects the kernel size so so here's the first one going in the tester and it is the planes plot and as you can see here, what I was saying earlier is that kernel depth, look at how much smaller it is on the airplane than what it is on the Heggie. So, 
all we gotta do is wait on the results from the beautiful tester. So the plane plot was at 18.3 and 58. So now let's go ahead and we'll run the Heggy plot. We gotta wait on it again, so. Do, 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 do. So the Heggy plot was only about two points wetter. It was at 20. Whereas the, uh, wait, no. The Heggy plot was two points wetter. The plane was at 18. And the um, Heggy plot was at 20. So the test weight was still at 50. Both of them was at 58 on test weight. So that is always a good sign. But yield definitely beat the plane with the Heggy. The Heggy definitely had the plane beat. So there's that for you guys that wanted to know. Um, it all came down to yield at the end of the day. Who cares about coverage? It's about yield anyways. So anyways, guys, I'm going to go home. I am still at the farm and it is late. And I got plans tonight, so I should probably get going home before all my friends kill me. So anyways, guys, please remember to like and subscribe. Follow the farm Instagram, Facebook page. And I guess that we'll see you guys in the next video.